Okay, just a quick question here. Can a higher pressure valve be substituted for a lower pressure valve? Uh, the answer is actually yes. Uh, the main important thing is that you at least meet or exceed the pressure class that you have to meet. So, for example, if you had a 1,500-pound class globe valve uh, in the line and you needed a quick replacement because it's leaking or whatever and you had a 2,500-pound class valve on your shelf, yet you can substitute that and you're still within codes. There's no problem with that. The only thing that you want to be sure to do is that you keep some records on that, that you've made this change. And also, the other caution is to be sure your metals are compatible uh, with what it was welded in the line before. As an example, if it was just a carbon steel valve that was in there before and it was carbon steel pipe and you bring out a chrome moly bodied valve, you've got to be sure that the welder knows that and they will pick the proper welding rod that will mate those two together because it's real important that that uh, be, be done properly. Okay, let's quickly move on to valve metallurgy. Uh, this is something that you uh, will see a lot of in the valve specs and also on the side of the valves. There's uh, Some of these will have different um, codes and I'll explain what those are. The first one here is, is uh, there's actually two things, WCB or A105. That actually means the same thing. It's just a pure carbon steel body. WCB is the cast steel version of that body. The A105 is the forged steel version of that. So that just it's the same thing. It's just one's cast and one's forged. Uh, you can see it's it's uh, not very good for if you got any corrosion or oxidation. Uh, and typically these are used in 800 uh, pound pressure groups and lower. They usually are not used above 800 pound. When you get to the 1,500-pound class valves, typically they will start being involved with the F11 or F22. And again, WC6 is the cast version of that. The F11 is the forged. WC9 is cast. F22 is forged. Uh, the addition here to the carbon steel is, is they're adding chromium and moly, and those two things will help inhibit, uh, uh, inhibit rusting or any breakdown or oxidation within the valve, and the valve basically will last a lot longer. <clears throat> it also is a hardening factor, and it will keep the uh, erosion from tearing up the valve as fast as, as it, you know, wood with just a carbon steel body. CF8M is the standard for, or is the code for nomenclature for 316 stainless steel. That would be certainly an ideal material to use in all valves and all piping, but due to the cost uh, you know, situation, nobody can afford to actually build a, a plant out of all stainless, but that certainly would be from a hardness standpoint and a corrosion resistance, um, that would be ideal. One of the other levels that instead of uh, F22 that we're starting to see is mainly only with, with new uh, plants or new construction, uh, customers are asking for, or engineering companies are asking for F91. And if you look at the chromium level and the moly level here, and also they're adding some nickel. Nickel is always very good against corrosion. Uh, nickel is one of the, the ingredient, key ingredients that's actually in 316 stainless. But look at the percentages, how high they are, 9 and a quarter and 1, versus back here, the best is 2 and a quarter and 1. So uh, a lot more chromium, and that allows uh, up to higher temperatures and less oxidation or corrosion going on. So anyway, that's, that's the breakdown. Typically in the power plants, uh, it's, you're going to see carbon steel for your, your large gate valves that are, I would say, 300 PSI and, and below, eight, maybe even 600 PSI. When you get up to the high-pressure forged valves, they're typically going to be F22 is what you're going to see. Okay, let's go into the linear valves. And a linear valve is, strictly means that the operation of the valve is in a linear motion. Uh, the gate or the globe or the stem rises and, and lowers to open and close the valve. The, uh, ap the valves that are, uh, would be termed linear valves are gate, globe, knife, and diaphragm. Also, you could potentially consider a, a check valve if it has a linear piston in it to be a linear valve, too. Okay, we're going to start with gate valves. And let's talk about what, what are the good features about gate valves. The gate valve probably is the most common valve that's in any plant, whether it be a power plant or, or a chemical plant. Uh, the pluses of it is that, is that when this wedge, disc, uh, or gate is pulled up completely into the bonnet area, it is like a full port valve. You have full flow going through there. So that's an ideal situation if you need uh, the maximum capacity of flow. 
One of the other pluses is it's usually a tight shutoff due to the wedge seating. These rings here on the side are actually double seat rings, and they're tapered, as you can see that, and the wedge has been machined as a taper. So when you wedge that in there, you get a nice tight fit. Um, one of the other pluses is, the, is when that wedge is completely up out of the flow path, you don't have a situation where the steam or even uh, an abrasive like river water or something with grit in it would cause erosion because that you get it completely up out of the flow path. Also, availability and price is is at, is wonderful. Everybody's got them on the shelf. Any pipe valve and fitting house has them. Price is low on them, um, so it, it's definitely an ideal valve, and it's used almost everywhere. However, some of the things that you should be aware of, there are some negative attributes that are answered by other valve designs that you might want to consider in uh, replacing a gate valve in the future. Uh, one of the issues is, is that uh, it, it does use a multi-turn to operate it. In lieu of a quarter turn valve like a ball valve or a butterfly valve, this requires multi-turns to open and close that valve. Uh, it's also very expensive to automate. If you're going to put a motor operator on this or a pneumatic actuator, uh, it gets very expensive to automate a linear type valve. One of the other big issues is is packing leaks. Uh, they're very, very common in all linear valves. Everybody's got them in their plants, and they're always a maintenance headache to deal with. One of the other potential issues with this valve, even though I mentioned up above, they're great for tight shutoff due to the wedge seating. They also do have issues with seat leakage, and it's mainly because they get misapplied. And what I mean by that is this next line down here. If you use these to throttle with, if you only open them up halfway, uh, that, di that wedge gate there is hanging down the flow path, and if it's steam or if it's, if it's water or whatever, it's basically going to erode part of that disc away and mar the surface, the seating surfaces, and it's going to cause a leak in, in, in the future. So uh, these really should not be used to modulate or, or a throttle with. Uh, they, people do it all the time, but just as a warning, uh, they won't last very long because they're not designed for that. That's what globe valves are for. Uh, one of the other negative attributes of a gate valve is the high torque to unseat it. Um, since that does wedge in there to make a nice tight seal, uh, it also jams it in there, and there is some flex there in that wedge. That's what those little gaps are right there. But uh, when you try to un un you know, open that thing up, sometimes you've got to get a cheater bar out and, uh, or two, two people hanging on the, the big wheel on top and, and trying to get it open. So uh, anyway, that's the features uh, of a gate valve.